Welcome back. It's been a hot minute versus like a cool, a cool minute. Oh, sorry. I just have a, got a little chip on my shoulder. <laughs> Hola. Soy de Austin. <laughs> oh my goodness. I am so sorry to hear that. The pandemic's got me feeling kind of pillow. <laughs> I don't even think that one works. Big my corner. Girl, I want you to know. Woo! I can't get you out of my head, my head, my head. No. Girl, I want you to know. I don't even know what you did, you did, you did. Hello, SFY, and welcome back to Craig McCorner. Today we're gonna talk about being little babies. I'm just kidding. Kind of. But I cannot wait to reflect on today's gospel with you. Let's dive in. Let's begin by opening up today's gospel and the living word of God uh, by moving our hearts and our minds to a posture of reception, that we would become more aware of his loving presence with us in this moment and its expression through the Word of God. And let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Matthew eleven twenty five. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. We hear a lot of words in today's gospel that we use when we're talking about our family, right? Son, Father, my translation says infant, the NAB says childlike. And so Jesus is giving thanks and praise to God the Father for revealing himself to those with childlike faith. Childlike faith. What, what is Jesus talking about? What does he actually mean when we're talking about that? We might have heard this description of faith often, uh, might even seem cliche, this idea of childlike faith, but what is Jesus actually getting at? Children tend to be trusting, dependent, and happy. A child in a secure home has the freedom to explore, to learn, to make mistakes, to make good choices, to make bad choices, to laugh, to cry. And they have this freedom because they know for a fact that under no circumstance will the love, the approval, the affection of their parent be taken away. They're totally secure without fear in that knowledge. It seems that many people have an easier time connecting with Jesus than they do with God the Father. God the Father tends to be seen as a distant, cruel, cold disciplinarian. And this is because we tend to bestow the negative and positive attributes of our earthly, broken families and world to God. We often try to condemn ourselves before God can. We might hold a sense of shame before God the Father or this need to prove ourselves before him. But Jesus tells us this is exactly what we are to avoid in a relationship with God the Father. Today's gospel, we see Jesus reveals something very important about God the Father. And that is that he is just that, a father, a good father. Father. We overcomplicate the fatherhood of God when we try to grasp and dogmatically understand what it is that God wants from us. I know many times I get caught in this whirlwind of anxiety and confusion and insecurity when I start to believe that I'm somehow disappointing my father, that I'm somehow not performing well or giving him what he wants, that he's tolerating me, that I could lose his love, that he's going to pass a final judgment against me. Jesus shares with us today that we can approach God the Father with the confidence and freedom and trust 
of a child, a kid, totally secure and free in the fact that they will be loved, forgiven, and taken care of by a good, good dad. And this dad is perfect. He doesn't just tolerate his children. He isn't passive towards them. He is delighted in and engaged in who you are. That is the father that we have in God. That is the relationship that we are called to. Take a moment to rest easy today in the arms of a father who cares for you, loves you, understands you, and holds nothing against you. When we begin to root out these false beliefs about God the Father, when we begin to allow ourselves to trust in the simplicity of a childlike faith, we begin to experience the freedom to be virtuous. When we are sure of being loved as sons and daughters of the best dad around, the natural fruit of that is that we would begin to live life rooted in virtue, rooted in the gifts of the spirit, joy, peace, love. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid whether or not you will be taken care of. God, who has everything, has claimed you as his son and as his daughter to be a part of his family as a perfect father. He wants his children at every moment, despite what you've done, despite the worries that you hold, to be at peace, to know they are loved, and to be secure and safe in the fact that they are being taken care of and provided for in his care. Rest easy with him today, brothers and sisters, despite all the circumstances. I love you guys. I miss you, SFY. I hope to see you guys soon. Be sure to tune in to our Zion live stream this Sunday at 7 p.m. We have a fantastic speaker. It's going to be a beautiful uh, moment for prayer and for encounter. I'm praying for you guys. Rock and roll, SFY. Girl, I want you to know. Woo!